The DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware presents The Cavalcade of Music. Twenty years ago, few people dreamed that someday the movies would talk and sing, that music would be specially written for the film, and that Hollywood would have a tin pan alley all its own. But it happened, and one of the composers who has climbed to the top via the movies is a young man named Nacho Herb Brown. Born in Los Angeles, Brown simply moved a few blocks and went to work in Hollywood studios, writing tunes that quickly caught the national fancy and established him as a top-flight composer of light music. In fact, Brown has written only for the pictures, an unusual record in itself. Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra are ready to play a full program of music by the young University of Southern California graduate with the unusual first name. Incidentally, we asked him about that name, Nacho Herb Brown, and found he was the first child born of an old Spanish-American family, and that Nacio means firstborn. As a special feature of our DuPont Cavalcade program this evening, a little later on, we're going to hear from Dr. Frank C. Whitmore, incoming president of the American Chemical Society, speaking from Rochester, New York. Here's a Nacho Herb Brown tune everybody remembers. From the picture Hollywood Review of 1929, the cheery Singing in the Rain. When Raymond Navarro starred in the talking picture The Pagan, audiences left the theater humming a song that soon became one of the country's top tunes. They show her Brown's Pagan Love Song. Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra play it. Years ago, Nacho Herb Brown had established himself as a star composer for the musical movies. One hit after another came from his pen, and one of the most popular was this one, The Moon is Low, 
from the picture Montana Moon. One of the finest actresses on stage or screen once sang a Nacho Herb Brown number into almost immediate popularity. The actress turned singer was Pola Negri. The song was Paradise from the picture of six years ago, A Woman Command. Here it is, a special Don Voorhees setting of the waltz, Paradise. <laughs>
In addition to his skill at writing interesting melody, Nasho Herb Brown knows how to make music tell a story, too. Here's an example of tunes from the Broadway melody of 1930, The Wedding of the Painted Doll, played by Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra. <laughs> thought of a picture called Student Tour, which came out three years ago, was a gay, jingly tune that was easily the hit of the show. It's one of Nasho Herb Brown's own favorites. And if he's listening in out in Hollywood, we hope he'll enjoy hearing Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra in a special setting of A New Moon Over My Shoulder. <laughs>
ask a group of musicians to name the best number Nacho Herb Brown has written. And the chances are good that the majority vote will be for Temptation. Bing Crosby sang it in the picture Going Hollywood, and ever since then it has been a real favorite. Temptation. <laughs> for a preview. Next week, the musical picture Broadway Melody of 1938 will be released nationally. It boasts one of Nasho Herb Brown's best scores. Now we'll hear three of its top tunes, Your Broadway and Mine, Yours and Mine, and Feeling Like a Million, played by Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra. <laughs>
Horatio Herb Brown was among the first to win renown in popular music circles without even setting foot on Broadway's famed Tin Pan Alley. For his contributions to the music of the movies, which is much of the music we sing and dance to these days, we're pleased to salute Nacho Herb Brown in our DuPont cavalcade of music. Now for our trip to Rochester, New York, which we mentioned earlier. In that city, 3,000 members of the American Chemical Society are attending the 94th National Meeting and at this moment are holding their banquet in the dining hall of the Bausch & Lomb Optical Company. We're going to hear from Dr. Harrison E. Howe, outstanding writer and editor of chemical subjects, and Dr. Frank C. Whitmore, Dean of the School of Chemistry and Physics at the Pennsylvania State College and President-elect of the American Chemical Society. Dr. Howe will ask Dean Whitmore a few questions about the activities of the American Chemical Society and their importance to the world at large. We turn now to Rochester, New York, and Dean Whitmore. Good evening. I'm happy to appear on DuPont's cavalcade program as spokesman for my fellow chemists. I find that I am to be interviewed by my friend Harrison Howe, and I guess we're ready, aren't we, Harrison? I guess we are, Dean Whitmore. And why don't you begin by telling the cavalcade audience the purpose of these national meetings of the American Chemical Society? Well... There are many reasons for the meetings, of course, but the principal ones are these. To hear reports on original research projects of the past year and to review the most recent achievements of chemistry. By exchanging information, we make progress easier. And when we achieve progress, we feel that chemistry is doing its part toward serving public welfare. I see. Uh, now, Dean Whitmore, how does such progress directly affect my friends and my family? In many ways, every day... For example, chemistry gives us better food, better clothing, and better shelter. Chemistry provides improved refrigerants to preserve our foodstuffs, garments produced from man-made fibers, new materials for our home, the automobile from its tires to its finishes, the photographic industry, including the movies. All these necessities, as well as many luxuries, were created or vastly improved by chemists. Yes, Chemistry certainly has contributed to our comfort and well-being. Now, Dean Whitmore, won't you tell us about some of the new things right out of the chemical laboratories, which soon may play an important part in our lives? Yes, there are plenty of them, too. The health-giving vitamins are all pretty much under control now. Vitamin A has been separated from cod liver oil, so that it no longer tastes fishy. Vitamin B, within the year, has become a product of the chemical factory instead of being laboriously extracted from rice husks. Vitamin C has been made synthetically, and a new method of putting vitamin D into milk increases its effectiveness tenfold. And what about the rest of our food supply? Several important developments are underway. Plant hormones, those complex chemicals which control the growth of plants, have lately been discovered. They so stimulate plants that we may soon be able to produce fruit or grain almost as plentifully as we wish. The ravages of insects, such as moths, grasshoppers, scale beetles, that, de that devour much of our food, may very well be prevented in the future by new insecticides harmless to humans and animals. Agriculture may become more productive, and humanity may get a more generous share of the products of the soil when some of these recent chemical discoveries are put to work. Dean Whitmore, do you think we have reached anywhere near the limits of discovery in chemistry? Well, Dr. Howe, prophecy is hazardous at best, and when speaking of research, it is doubly so. It can be said, however, that although the chemical industry now produces about 10,000 different substances for sale, we have definite knowledge concerning an additional half million substances for which there is no present use. Furthermore... The number of chemical substances obtainable from only two of the elements, carbon and hydrogen, may someday reach the astonishing total of millions of millions. With such unexplored prospects before us, prophecy fails us completely. Research by chemists into these things will change our habits in the future, as it has in the past. Just what form these changes in our habits will take, no one can guess. However, we can be sure that chemists will create new uses for products of farm, forest, and mine and new employment and opportunity for generations of Americans to come. I have an abiding faith that our children and their children will find life better because chemists are working and searching today. Thank you very much, Dr. Whitmore. We're back in New York, ladies and gentlemen, 
And you're invited to tune in again next Wednesday evening for a full program of music by Cole Porter. You'll recognize his work, for instance... Night and Day by Cole Porter, one of the Porter tunes you'll hear next Wednesday. And here's news. We had so many nice letters about radio's ace baritone, Conrad Tebow, when he appeared on this series earlier in the summer, that we've asked him to return. So tune in next Wednesday, same time and station, for Conrad Tebow with Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra, when the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, will again present the Cavalcade of Music. Broadcasting systems.